three, two, one, podcast. Podcast perfectly. We are here to podcast with one microphone. Hey guys, remember us? It's uh, Jen Ryan over there, Gabby Powell over here. We are just, you know, goofing off, doing a little inserting of something funnies here. And we had some technical difficulties with our mic. But not to worry, because whilst we will once again be passing back and forth my microphone arm, because we have one mic this, this week, we are in the progress. We are in the process. Wow. What is it about podcasting that makes my brain fumble words like a 80 year old basketball player well it's been a long day and it's been a long week and it's been a long holiday that we're coming off of jen ryan has to talk long like that so that her face gives me the heads up i'm about to start talking now so i can rush my microphone hand in front of her mouth hole that's right folks today on insert something funny here we have one mic we are winging it and in the true holiday spirit, we are keeping our shit together and carrying on. Isn't that the, the phrase? That is the phrase. And in answer to all of your emails and letters and pigeons and owls, we are finally getting real big girl mics soon. So that's our overpriced Cyber Monday purchases that we're giving ourselves. That's right. We are getting big mics. I think, okay, I want to do take two of that release of news. I'm going to do it a little more Oprah-ish but, and pretend that it's a gift for them. So, guys, check it. We just got you guys, the listeners, our dedicated fan base, the best Cyber Monday slash Thanksgiving slash Christmas present ever. Better sound quality. You get better listening and you get better listening and you get better listening and we get better microphone stands and everything that comes with the package. See what I did there? Marketing. Positioning. Pretending that it's a gift for them when really it's a gift for ourselves. But everybody wins. You sucked them in real good. They won't even see it coming. Sucked them in real good, huh? That reminds me of today's episode. That reminds me of today's episode. Because today we're talking about plumbing. So, obviously, toilets, sinks, pipes, and pipe dreams all part of the plumbing process. We learned things whilst talking, or well, I mean, when I say we, I mean Jen Ryan and I are the same person, but I learned so much when talking to my friend Andrew, who has been a plumber plus pretty much every other position at his father's company before he moved on to even work in like a more techie side of uh, this, still the plumbing industry. So he knows a lot of info. We'll get into that in just a jiffy. But first, I'd like to open the floor to you, Jen Ryan, because, I mean, as we all know, for most people at home, we strategically planned this uh, post-Thanksgiving episode to be about plumbing because we figure, hey, you guys all had a bunch of company at your houses. You guys probably were waiting for the bathroom at some point because of all the family visiting, or maybe not because COVID, and maybe nobody visited, and you had all the bathrooms to yourself. Maybe. Basically, we are expecting that you stuffed your pipes full of turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and you may want to know how pipes in general get loosened and cleaned out because you're worried about your own colon. Or maybe maybe you have an annoying family. So you were the, the cousin or the, the family member that found yourself constantly sneaking off to the bathroom just to have a fucking second of peace. Maybe you were that guy. Or maybe you're the, 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 ooh, maybe you were the girlfriend that it was at her boyfriend's house for the first time and you just tried to take a quick number two and then you accidentally like blocked up the toilet and had to figure out how to use a plum, uh, plunger for the first time. All of this is all related to plumbing episode being this week. That was strategic and purposeful. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up, Jen. And what most of our listeners most don't know is that we actually have been pipe dreaming this episode since the inception of this podcast. Because when we originally started the podcast, we were like, what in tarnation are we going to talk about? And then Gabby reached under her pillow, dug out her diary, and realized that since she was a wee little tot, she's been journaling about wanting to interview local experts on their trades. Yeah, I was. You know, it's true, baby. So... <laughs> 
literally the first thing that we always thought was like, yeah, it would be cool to interview a plumber and like learn how toilets work because toilets are one of the most amazing things that we take for granted because if your toilet breaks, you realize how vital it is to living a civilized, normal life. And we actually don't even know how they work, yet we embrace them, love them, sit on them every day. Right. You spend how many hours? I looked it up and it's 17 hours every week. (laughs) Well, and for men, that's much more. It's probably triple. Yes, exactly right. It's exactly triple. That's not real. But, you know, think about it. You spend a lot of time up in that bathroom near that that sink, that toilet, that shower. Oh my God, I recently had my shower get clogged and I basically died. It was horrible. Oh, wow. This is going to sound like such a bougie episode. I, one time I shower got clogged. Me, 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 me. But, you know, I guess it's just one of those things like this is exact. You're exactly right. This episode is iconic for us because um, when we were thinking about, well, what's important enough to be the, the base of this podcast that we're you know, going to use um, this podcast as a platform to create and create positivity and comedy, but also the main vehicle is the interviews. Right. And so it was like, who's worth interviewing and we thought man those uh everyday workers that are coming and going and doing so many big big moves in our lives that aren't really getting like a bunch of shout outs and recognition in the day-to-day world I mean unless there's like a piece on a news channel about how like a plumber saved a dog or you know stuff like that you don't really hear about these odds and ends and in-between jobs so uh on that note if you know anyone that has a cool not often um praised job uh, or maybe it's you yourself let us know we want to interview people around town people around florida and occasionally people around the world (laughs) that just have these jobs that it's like oh wow i guess that that job interacts with my life a whole much more than i thought and it might be cool to hear you know a couple stories a couple science-based factoids from from their arena yeah yeah And I, for one, am very grateful for plumbers because if my job had anything to do with anything coming out of my backside, I would get fired on day – like, I would get fired, like, in HR orientation. Like, I wouldn't even make it to day one because I would just – I don't like anything having to do with poop. I don't like – Nobody does. And they have to deal with that every day because toilets get backed up, piping gets backed up. I mean, recently we had to call a plumber because somehow our – toilet system got backed up and it was traumatizing she whispered that it was traumatizing just in case the sound didn't pick that up because we remember we are still sharing my one mic arm back and forth and back and forth so you said have to you said plumbers have to deal with that and that's the fucking beautiful amazing thing about people that do these hard jobs is they don't have to they choose to do this job and they're like the secret ninja heroes of the first world. I know I was sounding bougie before talking about like, oh, it really sucks when you can't have a hot shower or shower as long as you want. But we all know that. That's why it's awesome to live in America and not, you know, in a hut somewhere without AC. So it's kind of like you don't think about it, but I really do appreciate it. And I'm really glad that we spent some time talking to Andrew and um, just putting that positive vibes out into the universe on like, thank you, plumbers energy, because I do not want to deal with it, but I am so flippin' thankful that enough people do want to deal with it that we get to have these nice things. I like nice things. I like nice things. We like nice things. But let's all take a quick second and just throw some thankful energy out to all the plumbers, all the sink fixers, all the shower head installers. You guys are ballers. And with that, we're going to segue real smooth and slippery over to our interview with Andrew, the plumbing powerhouse. Ooh, yeah, slippery and in need of a tuning up. And maybe he'll put some plumbing tape on it and fix it on up right now. That was a good transition. That was fun. I love when we go jazzy. Okay, insert something funny here, listeners and maybe viewers, if we're already on YouTube at this point. I would love to welcome my friend, Andrew Gillian, which I know I'm saying absolutely correctly. Yeah. Andrew Taylor Gillian. Right? Gillian is not right. Gillian is right. Gillian. Right. 
So Andrew Taylor Gillen. Nice. Nailed it. Okay, perfect. So <laughs> he is currently a project manager, but he has basically held titles such as septic helper, plumber, manager at a plumbing company. So he is the perfect person to throw all of these plumbing related question darts at and we will get right into it. So Andrew, word on the street is your dad owns a plumbing company out in Florida. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, he, he basically started it when I was uh, born and um, he's you know built it into this really successful business in multiple states and, um, and then I kind of got into it right after high school and did pretty much every job that I could on the way up to owning it and then one day i decided i didn't want to own it and so he decided to sell it so now he did a, uh, he's retired and i moved on from the family business to work in like the tech field of plumbing now yeah that sounds like a smart pivot since 2020 everything technology is smart to look into but still Very using fortunate. all of the skills that you built up yeah all right so what is the technology side of plumbing? Uh, it's not what you think. Like you think of plumbing as in like toilets and stuff. Um, this is more how to run your business more efficiently from a plumbing standpoint. So oh. you just uh, have, you know, you're bettering your tools to, to help the customers more. So we just help businesses grow and be successful with the software. So the plumbers do use it, but they don't, it doesn't help them do any of the, the actual tasks of plumbing. Gotcha. So for all of those at home picturing Andrew working on like a smart toilet with like tech stuff, no. stop picturing that. That's absolutely wrong. No. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. So, so since you held so many positions, what was your favorite, I guess, or the one that stuck with you the best? Um, I mean, being an assistant manager gives you the business side of things. So that's a really fun thing. And like actually um, managing plumbers, have come, that having to be the person they come to with questions and help and stuff. Like yeah. it's, nice to, it's nice to feel like you're doing something for them and helping their, their uh, jobs and whatnot. But um, yeah, being in a plumbing truck is also great. You get to go meet a bunch of new people and right. knock on doors and solve problems. And uh, sometimes you have bad days, but you know, a lot of it's pretty good. That's awesome. That's awesome and well-rounded because to get to kind of try on all those different shoes, that's like, that's like what the college advisors always recommend anyway. It's like, <laughs> get out there and try on like 20 pairs of occupation shoes so that you can figure out what part of a business you even want to be a part of. Because it's like for every industry, you, there, every industry has HR or management or whatever. So it's like you kind of got to sample and dabble. So I got to ask you, as a lady who's barely ever touched a plunger, what's going on? What's going on behind those walls? What's, uh, how do toilets work? Let's just get right to it. How does the toilet work? How does what's going on behind the walls? There's a lot of different questions there. Um, <laughs> Uh, toilets work uh, with a pressurized amount of water, or not pressurized, but like a gravity fall of water, mm -hmm. creating a suction to pull the things out of the toilet. Um, and, then, uh, and then water fills it back up and goes all over again. Um, but then those go into, yeah, the floor and then into the walls eventually to drain out of the house. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's all connected. Uh, mm. All the appliances are connected. They all drain to the same place and end up leaving the house eventually. So crazy. So basically what you're saying is a lot of magic and a lot of prayer is what. Uh, <laughs> it may seem like that, but it's pretty simple, all things considered. Right. I was, was telling Jen Ryan, I was like, I want to ask a plumber what he thinks about the history of toilets and sanitation and like how yeah. we've gotten from, you know, hole in ground to intricate system of like, I remember someone tried to explain to me like, you know, the gravity and like the reason why that, that first uh, swivel in the pipe, like that you could kind of see on the side of the toilet is like up, down, up, down. And then it goes into this other thing that uses gravity and, and like pressure. Yeah. Or whatever. But what do you know about history of toilets? I guess let's start there. Uh, not much of a historian really. Um, 
but I know, I know where it kind of generated from, you know, indoor plumbing is one of the greatest inventions of like the modern world. Um, yeah. A lot of plumbers are actually like super proud people because they, they really do a lot to keep people safe. I mean, plumbing is essential and underappreciated in a lot of ways. So, oh, yeah. um, so don't forget to uh, appreciate your plumbers if you ever need one. But, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it all stems from trying to get clean water and not die from the diseases that come with like being around septic and, um, you know, back in the day that, that killed a lot of people that was really unnecessary because now we know that we can uh, avoid it by simple, yeah, you know, like what you said, the, um, the, the P trap, the little curvy part that yeah. goes, that's under every single appliance, your tub, your sink, your toilet, everything that's connected to the drainage system has one of those and it's it's water that's blocking the gases from the sewer coming into your home right so you so it, it can't go through the water so your little little trap saves it so that oh. keeps you that keeps you alive honestly if you don't have one of those you you just you know you die from like i think it's methane poisoning or something so that's comical a little bit but very yeah very serious stuff <laughs> it's serious <laughs> but it's it's crazy to think, but yeah, I never really thought about it like that. Like plumbers throughout the ages, you don't think about that from day to day. I love that there are people that are okay, you know, looking into uh, helping to fix, helping to make advancements for things like trash and toilet stuff. Like I don't want to think about it, but I love that <laughs> someone else does so that I don't have to smell poop in my home. Like that's yeah. really yeah. dope. And really, uh, like we've come so far from. And you like having hot stuff. baths and yeah. uh, clean hands and uh, yeah. clean dishes and clothes and everything. <laughs> right, every single freaking thing. <laughs> yeah, I love all of those things so much. So you much. love plumbers, then? Exactly. So <laughs> remember, guys, thank your plumbers. Thank mm -hmm. them preemptively. Thank them post work. Send them holiday cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, okay, then that gives me to my next question. What is your funniest, silliest, or weirdest home visit story from when you were said plumber? Uh, funniest, silliest, weirdest. Um, I mean, there's just people are weird in general, as you know. Yes. Um, so when you go to, you know, maybe five houses a day, you're going to see some and meet some pretty strange people. Um, one of the ones that sticks out to me was I, I was an apprentice with a guy and, um, and he was a really cool laid back guy. And we went to this house one day and it was a, an Asian family that uh, called us over to help them with their water heater. We had to replace their water heater. So we were going to be there a while and we were working on the job and this old lady came out like an hour in and brought out this massive plate of dumplings. And I've always been told like, don't accept food like from customers it's kind of like disrespect it's like no I'm, I'm sorry thank you very much but i have to decline kind of thing it's just kind of like you know professional right. um so i i started out by denying and like i got like half a word out and the guy said hey hey what are you doing yes absolutely we'll take those and he just like grabbed him and he's like thank you so much Right. And I was like, what was that about? I was trying to be professional. And he goes, dude, you do not tell an Asian grandma that you don't want her cookie. <laughs> so. You have to make that call of which rule is more professional or more appropriate in that given moment. I never even thought of that. I never even considered that that is such a thing. Like I, I always offer water or like coffee or whatever if someone's coming over to work but then i also kind of under generally understand that but yeah what do you do when a, a cute little asian grandma is like you know try my dumplings you have to, you have to. that one sticks oh, out yeah. a lot and then there's one other one that sticks out um we went to a call the lady opens the door but like has like a really tough time opening the door and and she finally gets it open and she was like trying to push back all the crap that was in her home she was a hoarder and it was like to the to the level where there was just trash piled high on every wall and you couldn't walk there was like walkways of, like on top of all the trash to get to places and she wanted us to come and like replace a water heater and all this mess and garbage and i made it probably 30 seconds in and i got like I had a panic attack. I've never had this before, 
but I just got like claustrophobic with all the trash and it just like got me it get like got my skin crawling Ooh. and I just to- I told my plumber I was like dude I've seen some shit you know I'm not like I'm not I don't have a weak stomach but like I need to go outside real quick and he's like yeah dude I get it go ahead <laughs> and he like he was right behind me like he oh. told the lady sorry we can't do anything for you but I, I bolted out of there. I just like couldn't even breathe. It was gross. That's crazy. That was nasty. Yeah. Gross smells in a closed space. That's a special kind of evil. <laughs> and you know, I'll, I'll prove that I don't have a weak stomach because my last story I'll tell you is on my first day of being a septic helper, uh, in a septic tank, if you don't know, is a big a uh, concrete box in like a backyard that just holds all your your sewage. So like instead of being in a city where your sewage runs down a main pipe to like the sanitation department, mm-hmm. this thing just sits in your backyard and lets the sewage like kind of like um, what's the word? Um, like it's like acts as fertilize fertilize your yard. So it just drains out eventually into your yard. It reuses it. Okay, repurposes it. I mean, kind of, it just flushes out and it just, you know, goes into your, so you can't have it near drinkable water or like a lake or anything because it can like leak out into that. So, um, but so first day on the job, I go to a septic call and we get to this house and these septic lids are normally like bigger than the size of a coffee table, like a a dining room table. Like they're pretty decent sized boxes. And, um, we get to this call and this, uh, this guy digs up a hole where you can find the tank. And then he looks at it and the lid is, I'm trying to like a manhole cover, like something you'd see in the street. It's like a circle, but it's much smaller than it normally is. And the guy I was with was about 300 pounds. And he looks at me and he goes, well, I'm not going to fit in there. And so he literally, the first day of the job, he made me get on a ladder into the septic tank and like, go make a repair. And I'll tell you, I didn't, I didn't puke, but it was, it was strong. That is a, not a fun day for anybody. (laughs) Wow. That's insane. Do you ever think, um, do you ever think they're going to use robotics to replace people to go down and, and deal with all those smells? Or is it just going to be like more and more efficient, uh, technologies for uh, probably making the tank yeah yeah okay making the the tank and like dealing with it versus like having to have someone go clean it because it is kind of archaic it's still just like a big concrete box it's kind of ridiculous (laughs) Uh, I wonder if we'll ever get to a time where the separation or the rift is like so dramatic where there's like you know hover cars in the city but there's still (laughs) some guys that are just like holding on to the old ways no matter what Maybe. <laughs> That'd be cool because then no matter where you are personally, there could be somewhere for you to live, like depending on how much technology you want. In your life. Yeah, true. So just to wrap it up then, um, what you do now, I know you said it's like a project management type of position. Mm-hmm. Are you like, are you working with clients, any cu- customer facing stuff, or is it you just have a team that you help and you help organize like projects moving forward? Uh, no, I currently I work with actual customers that run uh, mostly HVAC companies, but some plumbing companies all around the country. Um, the first like 10 people that I got in, uh, back in February were all in Toronto. And, uh, and so I actually went to Toronto three times in like the months of February and March to go like visit customers and then COVID shut us all down. But I got lucky that I got to go do some cool, cool traveling and get to experience some fun stuff with that. Um, Toronto's a great place. <laughs> yeah, I love Canada too. What's your favorite Canadian food? Uh, I mean, poutine, but yeah. uh, I, I don't know any other kind of Canadian food, to be honest with you. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Even if you did know other ones, that would still be the one right answer. So you passed that's that a good. That's a good uh, plumber's pun, some poutine. What, ah. what kind of, what's the, what's a plumber's favorite Canadian food? Poutine. Poutine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We'll end there on a comedy note since this is <laughs> first and foremost a comedy podcast, but Andrew, thank you so much. You're so interesting. Yeah. Funny. When are you coming back to Florida? I'm hoping real soon. Um, I miss it. I miss St. Pete so much. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'll let you get back to dinner and uh, yeah, keep in touch. Yeah, you too. It's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Ah, now we can all take a nice deep breath of non-methane poisoned air in our apartments, our homes, our 
uh, uh, cars, wherever the F you are. And we can be super, super grateful about the, what's it called? That water lip flap thing he was talking about. That keeps us from dying and smelling shitty smells. Shelling, smelling, shells, smell, smell, smell. <laughs> yes. So today's PSA is don't die. Stay alive. Yeah. Yeah. See? Actually, just really good advice. My, yeah. My mama told me that. She said, don't die. And I was like, oh, okay, mom. Yeah. And everyone listens to their moms. So if your mom tell your kids not to die, and then they'll have to do it by contract. That's right. So, speaking of contracts. Speaking of contracts. Um, perfect segue, I know. Have you broken a contract this lifetime? Go. I was hoping that we were going to make it plumbing related, but... <laughs> no? I've never broken a contract because I'm a lady of my word. If I say I'm there, I'm there. Uh. I don't think I've broken a contract either. I mean, besides that one I got sued for. But other than that, I'm good. <laughs> oh, my God. Your contract of being married to that one guy. Yeah, I guess that's a broken contract. Thanks, Gabby. <laughs> got her, everyone. You're thinking it, but I have the balls to say it. Go, 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 going there, corner. This is the <laughs> sassy corner where we go there. Oh, another thing about toilets that I learned this year is that bidets shoot water up your backside. And if you get a bidet, it's good to get a heated one so that way you have warm water and not cold water shooting up your backside. Right. Now, I will say, the first time that I met my first bidet, I guess this is a great story for this podcast, but I was um, visiting someone's house and I, I saw that their toilet looked weird. And, you know, it's 2020, so I was like, I bet it looks weird because it's a bidet on the back. And there were some buttons and some, like, Egyptian hieroglyphic symbols that I didn't understand. So, you know... I was like, let me push these buttons. What could go wrong? I'm an explorer, guys. You know me. You know Gabby, guys. We go way back, like 11-ish episodes back. That's a callback to our last episode where we said the same thing, but different. Check it out. So um, anyway, I'm at this um, this guy friend's house, and I um, just push all these buttons, and there's a knob. So of course, I'm like, hey. While I'm pushing all these buttons, let me twist this knob left and right a couple times. And let's just say that I was like two inches from being hit in the chest with the 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 stream, the aggressive stream of water. It just punts out. So I thought that there would be some kind of safety mechanic because I was like, I can't really tell where it comes out from. So I'm just going to push these knobs. And then if I like how it looks, maybe I'll try the bidet. But then, you know, since there wasn't a butt in front of it, it just splashed on the wall. And the, and like the towel rack and the towel that was there. So I made a little oopsie. Now, okay, so transitionary sentence here. Plumbing also has to do with sinks and showers and stuff. And we, we always forget that because, you know, Mario of Super Mar- Mario, Mario Brothers, the video game. I'm like, I'm talking like I'm waiting for someone to like agree with me. But yeah, so we all think of like a plumber is a guy with a plunger. Probably because the word sounds so similar. Am I right, folks? They're probably the same amount of letters, too. Yeah, which immediately your brain is like, boom, same thing. Yeah. But really, we should be thinking plumber pipes because I've done some deductive research. And every time a plumber does stuff, it has to do with pipes. So instead of thinking plumber and then equal sign toilet, we should be thinking plumber equal sign something that has pipes, like a sink or a toilet or a shower. Here's the thing. Your point is valid and very science-based. But the thing about sinks is they've gotten a lot of media attention this year because of COVID and people hand washing. So I thought we should stick to toilets because... Sinks have literally risen into the limelight so much that showers, okay, I give you showers, but showers and toilets have gotten left behind. So sinks have- Behind? That's right. Like a bidet. Bidet. <laughs> and I don't think it's very fair. So that's why I don't really want to talk about sinks at all. You know, that brings up some really good points because showers should be where it's at. Like I remember saying early on- if we're so concerned with the germs that are happening in like grocery stores or anywhere between, you know, one person to the other germ transfer, 
You should be stripping down as soon as you get inside of your house and heading straight to your nearest shower, which is for me just it's one shower. It's I don't have like a nearer one and a farther one. And we should be immediately throwing those clothes in the la- the laundry hamper. But we don't want to get political because of COVID because we don't want our podcast to get ripped down. You know so. what? It's too late. It's too late. We got controversial the first time we said poop this episode. It's true. Amazing. There's no argue. Oh, yeah, everyone. Real quick segue. Oh, speaking of showers, guess who showered after she got a haircut? It's Jen Ryan. <laughs> Perfect segue. Actually, that is a <laughs> sly suggest that people should watch our Le Hair episode. Ooh. 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 Tomorrow I'm going to go get more highlighty things done in my hair. So shout out to Danny. Whoop, whoop. My hair goddess artist. She's going to hook it up. So... Basically, to wrap up uh, Le Plumeur episode numero 12, um, yeah. I just want to say another shout out to Andrew because we haven't really touched on how, from the plumber's perspective, they're going from like house to house and they are also being absolute social creatures of some kind or another, you know, because they're having a face-to-face time with people so shout out to all the plumbers that are right now having to deal with the awkwardness of like house to house house calls I'm sure that's how that's worded um with like masks and worries and navigating that weird space but thanks for doing that anyway so that we could have working toilets working toilets yeah seriously thank you because we would be totally screwed without you so everybody who does that kind of work, the society cannot run without you. So just keep doing your job forever. Yeah. Not not a good society. You could have a shitty society. Boing, boing, boing. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> doop, doop, boop. And then that's where we just end the podcast. <laughs> oh, I, I do want to do a quick HR plug. We are hiring video editors. The pay is nothing. <laughs> your, your boss is our complete tyrant lunatics. But we are hiring. So if you're interested, email us at Hello at insert something funny here dot com. Hello at insert something funny here dot com. I need to actually check that email account because there's probably like slews of emails in there. Oh my god, so many piles of them. Yummy. Give us your yummy, yummy emails. Give us your yummy, sexy follows. And give us your legitimate comments. Like, well, folks, this has been a very poopy doopy doop. <laughs> episode answer something funny here that's a callback to when we were playing around with what we wanted the jingle to sound like jen ryan kept saying answer something funny here and i was like answer something funny here i know and then we just did that back and forth like a rat battle we sent it off to an editor and we're like help us and help us he did I really like our intro song. I know. I actually like listen to it just for fun. Sometimes I listen to it when I'm taking a shower. What? Tell us what you listen to when you shower. Or are you a singer? Are you a shower singer? Can I buy your first EP? Are you really singing track? Do you want to do a duo? That's like me saying, do we want to take a shower together? <laughs> I'm so controversial sometimes. Oh, I know. All right. All right. All right. Flush sound effect. <laughs> and that's how we'll end this one, I guess. See you guys next time. Miss you already. Bye.